making himself for a championship. Oh. Oh. A double play wins it for Frazier. Turn it to the end zone. What a catch. The Coyotes are a touchdown. He's going to the layup. Goes after Frazier. Frazier wins it. The championship. Good morning and welcome to the Class 1A State Baseball Championship game. The field is running behind from the previous game and we will be here for just a while chilling and watching warm-ups. So enjoy warm-ups and the game will start probably in a good 20-30 minutes. So you have a little time to make a sandwich and uh, pop some popcorn and get ready for this game. Great crowd today. Some are hiding in the, sun sh uh, the shade right this moment. You won't quite see them, but you'll probably hear them. Starting lineups for today's game. We do have that in yet already. Our announcers today will be the legendary Dave Bernhardt and Mark Lindo. They'll be with us in a bit uh, as they're preparing for the game. Definitely welcome to downtown Peoria, Illinois, here at Dozer Park, the home of the Peoria Chiefs. Sitting on a natural grass field. They're preparing the uh, infield. Genuine dirt. That's about a block away from the Illinois River, right next door to the Caterpillar Training Center, and right in the heart of downtown Peoria. Game should start in about 20 minutes, we're hoping, or less.
six and playing at first base, number 15, Tyler Furnish. Batting seven, the second baseman, number 12, Darren Kumpelman. Batting eight and playing in right field, number 25, Peyton Schaefer. And batting nine, the shortstop, number 23, Jack Keevan. And the rest of the Hawks of Waterloo, Jimbo Catholic. The umpires for this championship game. Behind the plate from Quincy, Fred Steinway. Along the first baseline from Muhammad, Michael Hart. And along the third baseline from Effingham, Dennis Duffett. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, remove your caps and face the colors to let the center field with your hand over your heart. And join our soloist, Joelle Roberts from tri High School, as she sings our national anthem. a state champion in baseball. We're going to do that right here at Dozer Park in Peoria, Illinois, as the Henry Sinatwine Mallards will take on the Hawks from Waterloo, Jabot Catholic. And hi again, everybody. I'm Dave Bernhardt, along with Mark Lindo. A gorgeous day, a perfect day to cap the 1A season against a couple of teams here that had outstanding victories one day ago by the narrowest of margins. Of course, it was Jabot Catholic, a 7-6 win over Goreville and Henry Sinatwine, first appearance ever in the state finals. They walked it off against Sterling Newman Central Catholic, two to one. And Mark, storybook finishes for each of these two teams, especially with what went down yesterday. They yeah, got two championship teams coming off fine performances yesterday where they were in pressure cooker situations throughout the game. Want a walk off win, want a, a save that needed to be made for less out of the inning. So both these teams coming off a high that was a long time ago, it seems to them as the championship looms right now. Usually a team that wins a championship in any sport but in baseball is a team that executes things in the best possible way and doesn't beat themselves. We'll see what transpires here in the next two hours. Let's take a look at the Henry Snatchwine lineup under head coach Max Kerbach. 23 and 6 in the season. Kerbach in his fifth season 76 wins. Mason Guineri to lead things off. He'll be in center field followed by Preston Rowe and then Colton Williams who's doing the catching. Lance Kieswetter will be pitching today. He's the ace of the staff followed by Mason Johnson who flip flops places with keys wetter he'll be at first base Carson Rowe at short Zach Barnes is a third baseman and rounded out with Jacob Miller and Tegan Williams defensively 
for Jabot Catholic. They are on the field right now. Hudson Blank, Daniel Darren, and Peyton Schaefer from left to right. Third baseman Ty Frederick. Jack Keevan at short. Darren Kuckelman at second. Tyler Furtich at first. Cameron Hanby behind the plate. Brady Biffer on the mound. Brady, Brady Biffer is 4-4. Four and four, 64 innings pitched. A 3.28 earned run average. But I'll tell you what, he can punch out 73 strikeouts, 20 base on balls. He will face the leadoff hitter of the 2023 1A state championship and to call it the Hall of Fame voice of the IHSA, Dave Bernhard. Well, thank you very much, Mark. First pitch, lefty on lefty. Guaneri loops it into short left field. Mason Guaneri gets things started on the first pitch. Well, he fisted that ball over to shortstop Keevan's hand, head, and Keevan just never read that ball off the bat. Drop step to his right. The ball was over his left shoulder. Put bot on ball in leadoff position, especially you create a little bit of action on the bases early on. First two of the tournament for Guaneri. That brings up Preston Rowe. Short lead, lefty on the mound. First pitch swinging, foul straight back, coming right towards us and clangs off the windows here in the second level of Dozer Park. So both Guaneri and Rowe, first ball, fastball, hunting. They both got it. One was fisted into short left center field for a base hit. This one fouled straight back. Short lead. Rowe is going to push it to the first base side. Nobody covering. That'll be a bunt single for Preston Rowe. Push bunt to the right side. He got the ball past the pitcher, Biffer. And before Furtich could come and get it, Furtich finally did get it, but Biffer was not able to track down the baseline, get up the line to get the inside part of the base. Too little, too late. And because of small ball, we got a rally going. Big hitter at the plate, Colton Williams for the Mallards. Williams, oh, 0 for 3 yesterday. Checks in with a 388 average, 14 doubles, couple of home runs on the season. Williams will take it for a strike. Our home plate umpire, this championship game is Fred Steinway, Michael Hard at first, and Dennis Dothit is over at third base. Williams looks at it outside. Daniel Darren in center field, and he threw a good center field ball game at us yesterday, playing very, very deep. Finally came in and got the last out for a save yesterday for his ball club. Chance for a double play here. Frederick at third. No tag over at first. Williams will reach on a fielder's choice. Mark that one up because that probably should have been a double play. Certainly could have, probably should have. The throw by Frederick brought Furtich off the base. He came up, tried to get a swipe tag, couldn't get the job done. So they trade a runner for a would-be out. Keeps this inning definitely alive. Courtesy runner at first base. That is Gray Thompson. He'll be running for the catcher, Colton Williams. Thank you. Sam Knox just brought you in lunch, Dave Bernhard. Huh? I'm busy. <laughs> I'll bet you'll I bet you'll find I'll time. I'll find some time. Thank yeah, you, Sam. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sam Knox, one of the reasons we love doing these games. Double play depth now in the middle infield. The double play candidate. A little off speed pitch really mixing his pitches is Biffer. We mentioned Biffer. He won't overpower you, but he does able to use 17 inches, maybe 17, 18 inches, extending the plate on either side. Runners are going. Keyswitter swinging, takes a big hack at that one and fouls it away. So you're running there on the pitcher. Not really a great running situation. Yes, one out is a steal of third opportunity, but table set for your big boppers. You better know that you have a good jump. And they did just that. He's what are a single and three at bats yesterday. 400 average checking in leads the team with 29 runs batted in along with four home runs. Takes a big hack. He's what are just a junior. Those are two really good swings. Yes he fouled them off but really in attack mode. Now the runner in scoring position. Got to take a little bit off the bottom. Try to think middle opposite right here. This one high in the air towards the right field line. 
Now in foul territory, nice grab by Tyler Furtich, the first baseman. He had to go a long way for that one and look up into the sun. And that's a big out because it's second out of the inning, but it's also a big out because you took Keyswetter and put him on the bench without him able to advance the runners whatsoever. The guy that you would really count on an RBI situation. First baseman Mason Johnson will try to punch a run home. Johnson yesterday, seven innings, only allowed one run, five hits, got the win in the semifinals. Out at second base is Preston Roke. Runner for Colton Williams, Greg Thompson is over first. One and one to Mason Johnson. Johnson really pulled off that ball. Your left-handed hitter against a left-handed pitcher, you really ought to think, hit the ball over the shortstop's head like that. To the left fielder, Blank. And Jabot will get out of it. Single, single. And nothing crosses the plate. No runs, a couple of hits. We'll go to the bottom of the first. The Jabot Hawks coming to bat in the 1A title game. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Jabot Catholic coming to the plate, leading it off. It'll be Cameron Hanvey, followed by Daniel Darren, then Hudson Blank. Brady Bifford, a pitcher, hitting in that cleanup spot. Ty Frederick, you heard him last inning at third base. Tyler Furtich, the first baseman. Second baseman Darren Kunkelman in right field is Peyton Schaefer in batting ninth. The shortstop Jack Keevan. Defensively for Henry Sinatwine will be Preston Rowe, Mason Guineri, and Jacob Miller in the outfield. Left side of the infield, Zach Barnes along with Carson Rowe. Tegan Williams and Mason Johnson along the right side. Colton Williams behind him late. Let's get a good look here at Lance Keyswetter. Hey, he's a good one. 10 and 1. 63 innings pitch, 1.33 earned run average. 121 strikeouts in 63 innings compared to his 37 base on balls. Three complete games victories in the tournament thus far. He's looking for number four, which would be a championship. First pitch swinging is Cameron Hanvey. Hanvey had a couple of hits, two RBI, scored a run yesterday. In addition to going six and two thirds innings on the mound through 100 pitches. How about Hamby? You just mentioned 106 pitches on the mound. And then he comes back the next day, he's behind the, behind the plate. Hamby picks up the win. Got one out relief from Daniel Darren. Darren came in, walked one, but got the strikeout and the save to catapult them into a title touch. And Hamby will go down looking. He's wetter, painting the outside corner. Really good backdoor pitch, right hand against left hand. He left it right on the edge. Right hand came up from home plate umpire Fred Steinway. Jamal Catholic had 10 hits yesterday. And boy, did they package them up to the top of the order. Hanvey, Darren, and Blank a combined six for 12. Driving in six of the seven runs. Hanby and Darren with doubles. Off the glove, off the foot of Mason Johnson. Still a chance, but instead an error will go against first baseman Mason Johnson. 
Johnson just never squared up on that ball. It was indeed hit hard by Darren down the line. A play that he probably wished he had to make over. And now you got a little bit of speed on the bases as well with Darren's table set for Hudson Blank here. Darren in every size lead. Keyswitter delivers. Big cut from Blank. Both these teams coming aggressive. We've seen a lot of first pitch swings already here in just an inning and a third. What did Hudson Blank do in addition to going two for four? One of those two hits a two run homer, the only home run we saw in our semifinals in all four games yesterday. Right down the 310 foul pole, and he was able to keep it fair and well over the wall at the 310 mark. Jabot needed every one of those runs. Hanging on to the 7 to 6 victory. They stranded the bases loaded in the bottom of the seventh inning to win it 7 6. Keyswitter working quickly. Tease blank on that one. Hudson Blank, 6'2, 165 pound junior. 396 batting average coming in. Double play opportunity here. Shortstop, Rowe, shovels, Williams, return throw, not in time. Good speed down the line for Hudson Blank, but the course out at second base. Good feed by Rowe. Williams caught that ball with his glove, then transferred to his hand. If we get both hands in there, might have had a better chance to throw him out and complete the double play, because that one was Taylor made. Now Brady Bipper will get a chance to help his cause. Left handed hitting junior pitcher played outfield yesterday. There goes the runner. Throw down, not in time. Great jump by Gray Thompson. And no chance for Colt Williams whatsoever. Check that. Of course, was Hudson Blank on the steal. Blank reached on the fielder's choice, 6 4. Could have been a double play. They weren't able to finish it. Now that runner is in scoring position. Looked at it and takes it for a strike. Looking for a little bit of a flinch. Seen our fair share of stolen bases here this weekend. I think we've only seen one caught stealing the entire weekend. Mm -hmm. It's game number six. I'm going to look to steal third. And he will. The ball thrown into left field. Here comes Blank. And just like that, Jabot takes a one nothing lead. Stolen base followed by an error. Second error of the inning for Henry Sinatwine. And that is certainly being aggressive. They steal second base after the failed attempt at the double play. They steal third base, and you see it happen a lot, to be honest with you. You see the ball going to left field on a stolen base attempt to third, and they basically create a run with speed after the inability to finish the double play. And Brady Biffer finds himself with the lead, just standing at home plate. Andy Scarrick saying, we're going to remain aggressive. Scooped into the air. Second baseman Williams called it initially, but it will be Carson Rowe, the shortstop, to pull it down. Big run on the board. It comes early, comes in the first inning. A couple of stolen bases and an error. It's 1 0. Jabot Catholic after one. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Jabot with aggressiveness gets on the board. 
They do it without a base hit as opposed in the top half of the first inning. The first two batters for Henry Sinatchewine reached by way of hit. So Brady Biffer will head back down to the mound and he will face Carson Rowe, Zach Barnes, and Jacob Miller. Well, the baseball book says you do not attempt to steal third base with two outs, but sometimes you have to throw the book out. As a coach, you have a feel, and you have a feel for your base runner knowing your personnel. You have a feel for what you see in the middle infield holding on or not holding on as well. And you also have a feel in full respect to anybody hitting that, okay, I might have a better chance trying to steal a run than just playing this out. So Andy Scare did all of those things with his decision making, and they end up creating a run basically on the basis. History for Henry Sinatchewine back in 1979 and again in 1993 when it was two class tournaments. Henry Sinatchewine made it to the state finals. There were eight teams at that time, so this will be the first trophy for Henry Sinatchewine. And I don't mean just for baseball. This will be the first team trophy of any sort. Yeah, and their town, both towns have turned out. This is a team playing for a state championship that was actually only third in their conference, which is pretty amazing. Otto Marquette, Putnam County, two traditional baseball powers, finished ahead of them this year. Carson Rowe will lead it off. He goes out to first pitch, falls it straight back and out of play. Rowe, the sophomore shortstop, our freshman shortstop, the brother of Preston Rowe. Preston Rowe hits in the two spot, the left fielder, and Preston, a junior. Carson Preston, a very competitive. And one would suspect that would be the case. A couple of brothers separated by a couple of years. Line drive left field, easily done by Hudson Blank. Those two rows, by the way, the cousins of Colton Williams. Zach Barnes to the plate. The Mallards have not lost a baseball game since May 6 when Gridley High School beat them in a 4 to 3 game. But they've been on quite a roll. Nine straight. Barnes hacks and that down the right field line. I believe that ball's still in the bullpen area. Nobody's gone down to get it. Oh, we will play on. Right there in the outside corner. And Jabot's last loss was in the middle of the month. Four to three to a to a school named Columbia. How about that? That's a pretty good loss. Four to three competitive game. Got both those schools ready for what we've seen with them here in Peoria. We'll see Columbia later today playing for the 2A yep. championship against defending champ Joliet Catholic Academy. <laughs> Barnes looks at it low. Brady Biffer. Will not intimidate you with his size out there. 5'6, 135. Best descriptor is he's crafty. Barnes staying alive. One and two. Outfield playing shallow for Barnes. 278 hitter. No extra base hits this season. Barnes, another one of these players. Well, let's see how many inches up is he on the knob of that yeah. bat. Especially with two strikes. You see Biffer, Biffer's pants all the way down to his shoes. The entire Jabot team wears them just like that, pants down or to the bottom. All in play of third baseman Frederick. Cuts it off in the grass. Two up, two down. Good 5-3 run through. That ball was not hit very hard. Frederick had to come and get it play the ball rather than the ball play him. He did just that. Squared his shoulders on the run through. Furtich with the stretch and the catch. Frederick to Furtich spelled the same pronounced differently. Not related. So it isn't you can't say this was a family and just as a joke they said OK what do you say we just pronounce our names completely differently. And yet and uh, head coach for Jabot Andy Scare says you know I don't help myself because I bat him back to back <laughs> in the order. Swing and a miss from Jacob Miller. Miller had an RBI single in a two to one game yesterday for the Mallards. Just 
Got a piece of that one for strike two. Boy, is Biffer moving the ball around. He is really changing the eye level of these hitters. And he's getting it and going. He has retired five in a row. Brady Biffer sets Jacob Miller down on strikes. And the Mallards come up empty, and it will be Jabot that will bat with the one-run lead when we come back. live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. Well, earlier today in our third place game, it was Newman Central Catholic. 6-2 win over Goreville, scoring the final six runs of the game. Central Catholic and Goreville picked up their trophies about hour and a half ago. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning and Ty Frederick to lead things off. Frederick, an aggressive cut, will follow it back off the delivery from Lance Kieswetter. How about Lance Kieswetter, his path through the tournament? Get to those numbers here in one moment. Frederick, though, will interrupt that thought with a pop-up to second. Keegan Williams will make the catch, now bring up Tyler Furtick. So here's what Keyswitter did. Regional championship, 14 strikeouts, a walk, a run, a complete game. Sectional semifinal, a one hitter with 10 strikeouts in a complete game. So he struck out 24, only gave up one earned run, eight hits and three walks in those two games. We followed that up with the, a complete game performance in the super sectional for Henry Sinatchwine. So with the whole pitch situation, pitch count situation, he would saved for the super sectional. And the numbers said, OK, you can't pitch till Saturday. And here he is in the title game. Sliding over and then able to come up with it is Jack Keevan as Tegan Williams will reach or make that Tyler Furtich will reach on the one out ground ball. Yeah, and taking that a little bit more in depth for Keyswater, he pitched in four of the first five games in the tournament. Three sport guy, their vocal leader. And they feel so good. He feels good when he's on the mound. He said it brings him joy <laughs> to be out in the bump for his team. Darren Kunkelman, second baseman for the Hawks. Kunkelman, a couple of hits yesterday, two of the ten that Jabot put on the board. Runner goes, throw down, sliding behind the bag and a stolen base for Furtich. Furtich had a very small lead went on the very first movement and a good throw and a good tag right there quite honestly would have had him but slides in safely putting himself in scoring position and Andy Scare is going to keep running until somebody throws him out and maybe even afterwards well he certainly has set the tone for this championship game set that tone in the mind of his players Scare with a state championship as head coach back in 2013, finished second in 2019. 295 career victories. Good job by Keyswetter, just letting the base runner, Furtish, know that he knows he's there. Middle infield's got to work a little bit harder. Speaking of knowing something, Darren Kunkelman knew it. He was called out on strikes. Seven, 
infield defense right now for Henry Sinatchwine really needs to keep the ball in the infield no matter what. If you can't make a play, keep it inside the infield. Save any would-be run. Peyton Schaefer swings through a fastball from Keyswetter. Straight over the top in the air, giving Chase Johnson catcher Williams and makes the catch. How about that? That, folks, is not an easy play. Long way to run. We've talked about foul territory here. That is a snag and a big one at that. Colton Williams, it's usually a tough play for a catcher. He looked gamesman the whole time. Like, it's mine, it's mine. I got a beat on it. And he made a really fine catch to end the inning and strand a runner on second base. Marked that one up as a key play in this game to save that at bat. Jabot with one hit in the inning. They take a 2 to nothing lead as we go to the top of the third. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. And of course, today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store, Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Well, I tell you what, if you have a son playing or a relative, a grandson, a nephew, I mean, you flat out got to buy this, right? Memory of a lifetime to keep in the family. Tegan Williams, number nine hitter for the Mallards, will look to start it off against Brady Biffer. Allowed a couple of hits to the first two batters. For Henry Sinatchwine. It's been quiet since. This one is yanked foul. Williams over two yesterday, 267 hitter. But you can tell he can handle the bat. A big crowd here for Henry Sinatchwine. A lot of red. It's all red. Mercy, there's a lot of people. Big swing and a miss. Obviously, we're objective calling this game, but I do want. Henry Sinatch wanted to get some kind of rally because I just want to hear and see their yeah. crowd erupt. <laughs> Biffer will have none of that to begin with, however, as he paints that inside part of the corner. And Tegan Williams will go down on strikes. Biffer is a pitcher. He's gone through the order here once, but a pitcher that is a, is a hitter. He's got you looking all different places at different speeds. Like I said, just standing 5'6 and 135. Obviously, it, one of the reasons that Jabot is here. Back to the top of the order, Mason Guineri. He let off this game with a single on the first pitch. He looks to bunt his way on this time. Biffer with that pivot foot at the far first base side of the pitching rubber. Sidestep, squares, and gets himself pretty well set. Guineri skies this one. Drifting is a shortstop Keevan. He's called off it by the left fielder. Hudson Blank, good communication. Excellent communication. Keevan thought he had a beat on it, but much easier play for Blank. Blank called him off. Good job between those two. Have you ever heard of the, I'll call it a rule, but a guideline that a, a play like that where two players can catch the ball? Let's say they both call at the same time. Whoever is the higher number, as in the left fielder is, you know, position number seven. Interesting. Shortstop position number six, seven gets the yep. call. Higher number gets it, yep. Like in an infield situation, shortstop would have it over the third baseman and second baseman, but your outfielder would yep. have it over the infielders. Very good. Six over five on the left side, four over three on the right side. Yep. Good stuff. 
All about angles. I'm going to give my son credit for that one. That's a nice one, yeah. Preston Rowe had a bunt single last time, did a beautiful job of bunting it towards the first base side, just pushed it that way and had himself on base. This time he's going to go left side. The hop takes a good one for Frederick. His throw across to Furtich. That's a very quick one, two, three inning. Brady Biffer is cruising. Jabot will once again get a chance to bat with the lead, leading it two to nothing, going to the bottom of the third. here in your 1A championship ball game. Well played one run on the board it came thanks to a stolen base of third and a throwing error that sent the ball in the left field and that allowed Hudson Blank who had reached on a fielder's choice to score our only run of the game. Yeah we mentioned on the open is who executes the best and the execution on the bases forced a play. The play wasn't made the errant throw went into the outfield. And that's basically a run created, but a run given at the same time. That's the only run on the board right now in our title game. You know, I always liked it. I mean, it's a comfortable feeling. That's what Jabot's feeling right now. You have that one run lead, right? And then you retire the side in order. And once again, you get to bat with the lead. And again, you get to yeah. bat with the lead. It just did. And on the flip side, it's, you feel like you're constantly playing catch up. And, you know, as I said, this game moving right along here. We're in the third inning already. Three at bats gone for Henry Sinatrawine. Yeah, and they put very little pressure thus far on the Jabot defense. Jack Keevan looking to lead things off in a positive way here for Jabot in the bottom of the third. Keevan, the number nine hitter, will go back to the top of the order and Cameron Hanvey and Daniel Darren. Lance Keyswetter on the mound. Jack Keevan, junior, 277 batting average. You can hear that glove popping. Colton Williams receiving the fastballs from Keyswetter. You know, we're not privy to, we weren't given the height and weight of the Henry Snatchwine roster, but you see Keyswetter, what, 6'2? Mm -hmm. Maybe 6'3. Big, strong young man. Dominant physical presence on the hill. Count now three and two to Keevan, who was two for two yesterday, scored a couple of runs, drove one in, also walked out of the ninth spot. This time he's going to look at strike three. That's the second consecutive and third of the game for Keyswater. In fact, all three of his strikeouts have been called strikes. Hanvey was one of those victims in the first inning. Yeah, he froze on a backdoor breaking ball. The other two strikeouts looking have been on fastballs. Lays this one right on the chalk, and it stayed there for the longest of times. Ryan Hanvey was motoring down that first baseline. Zachary Barnes saw that goal foul and got his glove on it in a hurry, just like he should. Don't want to allow that ball to hit anything funny and bounce or roll back into fair territory. Hanvey speed that was a sure base hit. If nothing else that will bring Barnes in a little bit tighter at third. Opens up a hole on the five six side of the defense. Here's a hole up the middle and Hanvey finds it. One out base hit for Cameron Hanvey. Anytime Jabot gets a runner, we expect the run game to be in. Now, to be in and on. Henry Snatchwine has not pitched out as of yet. You know, teams don't pitch out as much as they used to at any level. 
you have an explanation for that? I don't, but I, I really believe in pitch outs for a couple different reasons. One, I think you have a better chance of guessing right, especially on counts, and throwing somebody out. And two, I think you plant the seed in the opponent that, you know, you better, you better have a plan when you're running, not just run for fun. Daniel Darren at the plate reached on there. There goes Hanvey. Here's a throw from Williams. Hanvey in easily. Fourth stolen base here for Jabot, and we just have one out in the third inning. In the air to center. Guineri with Hanvey tagging at second. Guineri approaches. Hanvey made a hard break. Guineri made sure nothing funny was going to happen on that one as he throws a strike to his third baseman, Barnes. Sent a message showing off his, showing off that strong arm from center field by Guineri. That was a no go situation right there no doubt about that for Hanvey but just the fact I get to show up my hose a little bit that tells them something will send a message Hudson blank at the plate runner in scoring position and Keyswetter will do that little turn and move Hanvey back to the bag second time he's used the inside move just to let the runner know I'm aware blank goes after the first pitch Left fielder Preston Rowe, foul territory, bullpen, makes the catch. Made it look easy. One out single, fouled by a stolen base, then fly out, foul out. Three complete innings. And they have been quick ones. A one to nothing lead for Jabot here in your Class 1A state championship game. Park for your 1A state title ball game, the final day of the spring sports season here for 1A and 2A teams. And the temperature is cranking up here in Peoria under sunny skies, 92 degrees, just a slight breeze blowing from pretty much the right field corner to the left field corner. 92, that's nothing, huh? We had 94 yesterday. I, right. think, I think we'll get there. <laughs> we got a couple more hours to get there. You know, and obviously I'm not complaining because we've been involved in multiple no. rain and weather delays, lightning delays. <laughs> You're not complaining because we're in air conditioning no. as well. <laughs> I left that unsaid. <laughs> Colton Williams, 345 here to get things started against Brady Bipper. Probably seen more first pitch swings and yes. aggressive swings here in this tournament than we have in many years. Williams reached on a fielder's choice. Hits this one right on the nose to Hudson Blank. He's right there. Well, you can't hit it much harder than that. That ball was scalded, and Blank, I looked at him immediately thinking, okay, double or triple. And no, he had him played perfectly, playing him deep like he should, respecting his power numbers. And he had to move, what, two or three steps only to catch that ball easily. And that ball was scalded. One out to Lance Keyswetter. He's wetter off that first pitch. Not the greatest hack that he would have liked. He really got out on the front foot there. That was a full arms swing. Obviously, 
big old guy like him, but everybody, your strength and your ability to drive a ball comes from the lower body. Stand back on the backside. Just saw Cameron Hanvey, the catcher, just toss the ball back to Biffer. Question for you here after this pitch. He's where it will take it down. Now, Hanvey pitched yesterday, yep. threw 100 some pitches. How tough is that? I think it's really tough. How about going the other way? Catch first, then pitch. Different story, right? Yeah, I think it's a different story, but I, I think it's it, I think it's tougher to catch the next day, to be honest with you, because you've been so violent with your arm the day before, 106 times, not counting warm-ups. But he's a competitor. Well, he's a member of that state championship basketball team as Keyswitter walks, heads down to first base. In fact, it was Hanby sent his team to the state finals with a game-winning shot. Keith Sweater to run for himself. Mason Johnson with one out. He lined out to left his first time up. Play him to just pull ever so slightly. Quite a bit of room down that left field line. He goes after the first pitch. Who wants this one? Biffer, he played the outfield yesterday. He'll make the catch right there between third and the pitcher's mound. Yeah, when you know how to catch the ball in the air, then you don't need to stay out of the way. Although that would have been five over one, right? <laughs> yes, well, I'm just saying what the rules would have been for me. <laughs> well, now they're going to run for Keyswetter here with two outs. So I'm, I'm sure you're glad your son thinks the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> Did he learn that from his elder or not? Or you learn a lot from, from him? From thinking the game? Yeah. Well, it's mutual. I'll okay. tell you that. Yeah, it's amazing how much more I seem to know now than they did. But you know, we talked about that in an earlier game, right? And in terms of you get together, you talk things right. through. Nico Yi is running at first base, and again off the first pitch. This one, who wants it? First baseman, Furtich. Well, forget that rule I had. At least it's not being. <laughs> Adhered to by Jabot. However, it works for the Hawks. A one out walk, and that is it. Very quiet fourth inning. We go to the bottom of the fourth. We're halfway home in this one. It's a one to nothing lead standing up for Jabot. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. school sports fans never miss another game become a subscriber to the NFHS network to watch live event coverage game replays and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country millions of athletes thousands of games one destination and nfhsnetwork.com we are high school one run in the bottom of the first inning and that's all we've had on the board as Jabot bats here in the bottom of the fourth Brady Biffer, Ty Frederick, and Tyler Furtich. Yeah, I, I looked at my score. It, it, it should be Biffer. Well, oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Yeah, that was Ty Frederick in the in the box, and I was a little puzzled there. Well, that would have been interesting. Don't see that one all the time. No. Well, I think Frederick was so anxious. Biffer had just come off the mound, and he was probably still looking for his bat. And Frederick says, why not me? 
Biffer popped out to short his previous trip to the plate. He too has drawn Zach Barnes in tight. Four stolen bases today for Jabot. Two of them by Hudson Blank in the first inning eventually led to that one run. Biffer spanks this one to the left. Preston Rowe got the angle, makes the catch. Preston Rowe drop step to his left. The ball into left field off the left hand of bat will slice back to him. It certainly did. That looked like a double and left his bat, but it kept coming back, coming back, coming back to Rowe like you would anticipate with a left handed hitter. An easy catch for first out. And now Ty Frederick gets to bat. One out in the fourth. Lance Keyswetter has given up a couple of hits. Two errors by the Mallards from Henry Sinatwine. Those both came in the first inning. A little bit of low. Two balls and a strike. You know how you can tell we're in the middle innings? Crowd's kind of settled a little yeah. bit. Like this is where the team looking to make a move here. Frederick right through the middle, and it's a one-out single. He's over four yesterday. Popped out his first time today, but he's on base here, trying to set a table. Trying to set it for Tyler Furtich. Frederick with 15 stolen bases this year, so he is obviously a threat. Andy Scare in the third base coach's box with the timeout called on the mound. His hitter reflexively started walking down. Furtich started walking down to him, and Scare just kind of put his hands up. Nope, stay right there and flashed his signs. Everybody's ready to roll. You know, if you're Furtich, and what did Andy Scarer say to him? Do you take a pitch to allow your runner to steal a base, or do you play it as a hit and run kind of situation, or or, or a run and hit, if you will? Again, that's one of the luxuries of playing with the one run lead. You've got those options. Nobody's running to right field, dipping quickly and in front of the right fielder Miller. Frederick had to hold for a second, but he will stand up at second base, and the Hawks from Jabot have something going. Second hit of the day for Furtich. Good job taking that pitch, keeping the hands inside the ball, just kind of inside outing that ball to right field. Not really driven, but strong enough to get the ball out into the outfield. Darren Kunkelman struck out looking against Keyswitter. The second inning. He's late on that one right off the hands. So he's seen Keyswetter try to hold runners twice with, you know, the inside move. That time I'm watching him, he had a one look at second base. Let's see if he starts to vary that. Sometimes you get two or three looks, you'll get a runner that's already took off and be able to pick him off. There's one look, there's two, there's three. Good job. Kunkelman will wave and miss. Darren Kunkelman, a sophomore, as is Tyler Furtich, right here in the middle of the order, 5-6 in the batting order for Jabot Catholic. Just missed inside. No, got the inside corner. Kunkelman frozen on it for the second time in the game. Darren Kunkelman goes down looking. Favorable call if you're Keyswetter. He bought that ball. Right on the inner edge. Good frame by Colton Williams. Four strikeouts today for Lance Keyswitter, and they've all been called third strikes. Peyton Schaefer fouled out to the catcher. Colton Williams made a great catch right in front of his own dugout on the first base side. Big at bat here for Schaefer. Get another sophomore. This is fouled back. Let's 
sun pretty much directly overhead right now. Jabot's dugout, not not the rally caps really aren't out. Just a couple guys, yeah. not in full force yet. Well, that's a half-hearted yeah. attempt there. Pretty good pitch there from Keyswetter. Well, here we are in the fourth inning, and this is where Henry Sinatchwine, it's like we cannot afford another one here. Biffer is really dealing the other way. Ty Frederick back at second, Furtich at first. Schaefer at the plate. And this will advance the runners. Big turnaround third. Keyswetter covers the plate. Wild pitch puts runners second and third with two outs. Henry Snatchwine, though, really, really solid fundamentally there. The ball went back to the screen. Keyswetter covered home. Mason Johnson backed that up. You know you're well coached when everyone goes where they're supposed to go. In, in baseball, like many other sports, anytime the ball moves, personnel should move. Three balls and a strike. Three and two. Big moment in the ball game here. Bottom of the fourth in a one run game. Keyswitter delivers. Ball four as Schaefer will head down to first to load the bases. And no matter who wins this baseball game, and we're only the fourth inning, when it's over, said and done, they'll look at the bottom of the fourth inning as being key. If it's Jabol, they've got a key run or runs, and if it's Henry Sinatra, want a key stop. Well, there's going to be a key run right there off the bat of Jack Keevan. Scoring easily is Frederick. Furtich follows him. Three to nothing, Jabot. There it is, two RBIs and a line drive right back up the middle. Two out, base hit, two out, two RBI, single first and third. There is indeed the biggest hit of the ball game thus far creating separation. What a tournament Jack Keevan has had. Two for two yesterday with an RBI, a couple of runs scored. He has two RBIs here and stretches the lead with two outs in the fourth. That will bring us to Cameron Hanvey at the top with first and third. That might be the most barreled baseball of the day as well. Short lead at first. Hanvey hits it pretty well. That will drive Guineri back, backpedaling, and makes the catch still in a move. But how about that base hit with two outs and number nine hitter Jack Keevan? Two runs in the inning, three for the game. Henry Sinatwine playing catch up when we come back in the fifth. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Getting to crunch time here for the Henry Snatchwine Mallards. Trailing three to nothing. Brady Biffer on the mound is allowed two hits. They came to the first two batters he faced in this game. He has only walked one, and he will start this bottom of the fifth inning facing the seven, eight, nine hitters for Henry Snatchwine. That'll be Zach Barnes, Jacob Miller, and Tegan Williams. Remind you, you're watching live coverage of the IHSA baseball championships on the NFHS network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. 
You know, Zachary Barnes has to start this off. I think this is really important for the Mallards to get on the board any which way, not to play total catch up, but to just stop the momentum, scratch it, and close this gap just a bit. How anxious is Brady Biffer to get going? His catcher Cameron Hamby was adjusting his mask, and Biffer did his little sidestep to start his delivery. First pitch to Barnes, taken for a strike. He mentioned earlier that Biffer likes to start on the first base edge and the very edge as he delivers again to Barnes. Misses on that one. Oh no, check that. It's a strike. 0 and 2. But he likes starting that edge. And I thought maybe it was just with left handed hitters. He does it with right handed hitters as well. How many thoughts as Barnes fists this one? It will pop up. McCurdich soft out to start the top of the fifth inning. Any thoughts on pitchers who maybe adjust on the rubber to different hitters, or do you like your pitchers to stay no, right I, there? I, I, I prefer adjusting, to be honest with you. And if I'm a left handed pitcher, I'd like my pitcher to take away the you know the the inner part for a left handed hitter and then move over for a right handed hitter those are the adjustments I would make but obviously Biffer right now is incredibly comfortable and working well so you don't change a thing scoop but right into the glove of Kunkelman spoke of barrels that Keevan barreled up a ball last inning well the barrels are in not finding the ball here today for Henry Sinatra, and that's because of the job Biffer's doing. Number nine hitter in the order, Tegan Williams. First pitch. Darren got a late break, and the ball will drop. A little confusion between Blank and Darren, and that will find Tegan Williams at second base, and that brings the Henry Sinatra crowd to its feet. That ball was up a long time and I'm waiting and listening for your call and I'm thinking I'm thinking on that will be called a double. OK who's going to make the catch who will Dave call making the catch and it was no one. That ball dropped into never never land and I'll tell you what we've talked about good communication throughout the weekend quite obviously and there was lack of communication. Nobody wanted to take charge of that one. We'll see if the Mallards can. Take advantage. Mason Guineri to start it here. Trying to start this rally that was actually begun by Tegan Williams. Two gone. Guineri at the top of the order, followed by Preston Rowe if they get to him. 317 hitter. Nothing going. He did all he could to wait, 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 and then pulled off it. Certain moments in the ball game, and for Henry Sinatwine, yep. this is a huge one right here. Got a dent. Just get a little momentum. Guineri, a soft little floater into the glove of Ty Frederick. So the two out double will stay at second. Once again, it will be a lead and Jabot coming to the plate. Three to nothing, the bottom of the fifth. How about something new you played this last year? Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? <gasps> the conductor only plays his favorite. Lose! I can't hurt!
Karen. Henry Sinatchwine only has six outs to work with, which makes this bottom of the fifth inning so crucial for the Mallards. They cannot let Jabot score any more. Jabot Hawks up three to nothing. Single run in the first two more in the fourth. Leading it off is number two hitter Daniel Darren. He's quickly down in the count, no balls and two strikes. I think we see Darren on the hill as well, if need be. Got the one third of an inning save yesterday. If you're Jabot, you hope you don't see him on the hill. You'll see him at first base. Daniel Darren ropes one to right field. Now you can, with a three run lead, you can do so many different things. Hudson Blank scored that run in the first. Stole a couple of bases. And after a steal or during a steal of third, took advantage of a throwing error. We always talk about options for you know the head coach to make decisions to put things in gear on offense and and there are numerous options. I don't know right now if Andy Scare needs many options. I mean right now honestly they just been able to steal the base at will. It's not like you have to be creative or move somebody along or hit behind a run or hit and run. They've been able to just flat out swipe bases. Right in the meat of his order here. Darren at first three four five to follow blank Biffer and Frederick. I believe we have seen Lance Keyswetter's best move yet. Average size lead for Darren. He stays. He was up to count one and one to Hudson Blank. This one's hit hard to left field. Back, back, and gone. Hudson Blank goes yard for the second time in this tournament. And Jabot on top five to nothing. He got a fastball and he got all of it. Left field, the sign that says Pekin. Long ways away. That one was LG long gone as he put a charge into that baseball. Playing a little bit of long ball is Hudson Blank this weekend. He has doubled his home run total this weekend from two to four. More importantly, he has stretched the lead to five. Now the slow walk to the mound for Max Kerbach. Had 35 RBIs coming into the weekend. He's add to that and have a weekend it has been. Obviously a situation that Lance Keyswetter has not found himself in too often this season. Keyswetter a minuscule 1.33 earned run average. And Daniel Darren down in the bullpen as we anticipated. No he would not be coming in next inning but good job getting him ready. If he's needed to be out of center field. I think he's uncommitted baseball player. We don't have him for any school yet. I think he would be a tremendous recruit for you know the right level school. At the plate is Brady Biffer. He's popped out and flied out. Falls away from that one and fouls it out of play. Hudson Blank. How about this? What a what a senior or what a year Hudson Blank has had his junior year. He was on the uh, HSA Class 1A state basketball championship team for Jabot. Not only that, he scored 15 points in that championship game, and Brady Biffer is going to hit this one in the corner. This is a chance for three. Tracked down there by Jacob Miller. Biffer round second. The slide, and he has himself a triple. So Jabot has gone single home run triple in the first three batters here in the fifth inning. 
Well, he just laced that ball, had enough top hand to get it down the line, but stayed back long enough to keep it in fair territory, then using his speed. Pretty good job by Jacob Miller tracking that ball down and getting it in. But the speed of Bifford created that triple opportunity. Andy Altus to run for the pitcher at third base. And Altus, another member of that state championship basketball team, Hanvey and Blank and Schaefer. Wessel, Altus. And they are squaring up Lance Kieswitter. That's Ty Frederick. He will drive home Altus for a six to nothing lead. Yeah, you would probably believe that Kieswitter has not been through this kind of inning before. I mean, not only do they have the three runs, but they have hit the ball hard. And play number 15, Tyler Furnish. A couple of singles, a triple, and a home run. We do not yet have an out. Tyler Furtich wants to get in on the action. And hits the outside corner. A run in the first, two in the fourth, three more here in the fifth. Nine hits on the day as Furtich waves at that one for out number one. And Darren Kunkelman has been a strikeout victim twice. Both of them looking. And taking you back about 10 minutes ago when Daniel Darren led off this inning with the single I said there's so many things that yep. you can do. Well Andy Scare decided to let his number three hitter hit a home run his number four hitter to triple his number five here to drive him in and score three runs that's a pretty good choice. And yeah, nine hits off keys you wouldn't have expected that kind of offensive productivity. You can just feel the air sucked out of Dozer Park and you look to that first base side and all the folks in red from Henry Sinatchwine. It's not the same kind of pep in the step on the field as well. No, Keyswater for the first time is laboring. His pitch count this inning with have been all pressure pitches. High level pitches. Only five pitchers have seen action this season for Henry Sinatchwine. You have Colton Williams. He's doing the catching right now. Came into this tournament 61 innings pitch. Mason Johnson, we saw him yesterday with 62 innings. And of course, Lance Keyswetter, 63 innings plus what he's thrown here today. Catch the corner. It did indeed. Back to back strikeouts from Keyswater. It's fifth and sixth. Now, number 25, Peyton Schaefer. Peyton Schaefer involved in a couple of runs last inning. He was batting with two outs. He walked. And what did that do? It set up Jack Keevan for a two run single to take a one to nothing game to three to nothing. Yeah, Keevan's hit was absolutely huge in the bottom of inning number four. This ball's hit hard by Schaefer to left field. Five hits in the inning for Jabot, who's having an omnipotent offensive inning. And tip your cap to Jabot for being in really, really good attack mode. And again, you wonder if Keyswater's ever given up five hard hit balls in the same inning this year. Mm -hmm. Ten and one coming in. Keevan. Big swing. Pulled off that ball. Just a mite. 
front side came in, then the head comes off, and that all starts to be a swing and a miss. And follow this one out of play. He even came into this tournament a 277 hitter, getting out of that nine spot. He is now three for five, two RBIs, scored a run. Here on a Friday and now Saturday in Peoria. One and two. Even a junior, he'll be a middle of the lineup hitter next year as a senior. This one may find green. It does. Kiva will have his third RBI coming in to score is Frederick. It is seven to nothing. Two RBIs yesterday. RBIs today, three of them. Five RBIs, two days from your nine hole hitter. Have a weekend, young man, Jack Keevan. It's another thing that's special about these tournaments. You never really know what can play out. To second base, and that will be an infield single. It scores one. And that will be it. But Cameron Hamby will get an RBI with the base hit to second base. What an inning for Jabot. They score five. They do it on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits as they bat it around. And there is a lot of work to be done for Henry Sinatrine when we come back. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. <laughs> Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button to, under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Give a few final scores in baseball, not games in progress. But these are all finals. Champagne Central in 3A, 4-2 win over Rochester. Rock Island has defeated Pure Richwoods 8-5, so that Cinderella run ends for Pure Richwoods. Oak Forest with a 5-2 final victory in 3A. In 4A, final score, Edwardsville. They advance with a 3-2 win over Manuka. Rockton Hananega, a 3-2 win over Jacobs. And York has defeated Batavia 4-3. And I said I wouldn't give any partial scores, but I got to give this one because it's extra innings. Oswego East, Oswego High School, one to one, top of the ninth. How about that? <laughs> Rivalry game yep. to begin with, let alone for a sectional championship, and it goes extras. And you mentioned Edwardsville. They're the defending 4A yes. champs. We'll see the defending 2A champs in action here a little bit later when Julia Catholic meets Columbia. Preston Road to lead things off here in the sixth. Eight to nothing game. A little Fister. One hop to Keevan. One out. 
Boy, they have just not been able to square up Brady Biffer. What an outstanding job for Biffer. He's just a junior, so folks are going to be facing him again next year. And Jabot's defense has been rock solid as well, making plays for Biffer. Scooped up by Kunkelman. Dug out of there by Furtich. Well, your defense knows he's going to be throwing strikes. Your defense will be alert. Only two strikeouts today by Biffer. Airless ball for the Hawks. Lance Keysweater 0 for 1 officially, also walked. You look back in the last few innings, time of possession belongs to Jabot. That hits hard under the glove of Keevan into center field. So Keysweater will pick up the two out hit. Before Keysweater's hit, Biffer had retired 14 of the last 16 batters. So not a big streak, but 14 out of 16 is pretty rock solid. And that stretch through the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth innings. Remember way back when, top half the first inning, back to back singles for Henry Sinatrawine, and that was it. Nico Yee back to run at first base. Play, it's Mason Johnson. Johnson will follow this out of play. And they're holding the runner on at first base. Furtich holding on Yi. Eight to nothing lead here. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Biffer's been incredibly efficient the entire day, working at a good pace, a good rhythm. Biffer stares to the runner at first, leaves that breaking ball a little bit high. Johnson 0 for 2 today. Bo out hitting Henry by 12 4 margin. Hanvey looks up into the sun, and that will be about five rows deep. You know, a lot of folks would say, uh, you know, What's your favorite position? And, you know, young kids will always say, Well, I want to pitch. Not a whole lot say I want to pitch and catch, no. like Cameron Hanvey. But you know, those are the two best, right? You touch the ball on every play. And you talk about his basketball prowess. He, he's just a gamer. He's an athlete. Mm -hmm. No coincidence that Jabot is just four outs away from picking up a 1A basketball title. First time in school history and 1A baseball title. That would be the second for the Hawks. Bring him up. Mason Johnson waited. Curveball found its spot. And that will close out the top of the sixth inning. Great pitch by Biffer. Great assist by the bench. <laughs> with their noise, trying to get that strike call, they help with it. Bottom of the sixth we go. It's eight to nothing.
the bottom of the sixth inning, the same spot in the order we started the bottom of the fifth. Bo batting around in that five run fifth inning. Daniel Darren started that inning with the single and he will come to the plate right now. Darren one out of three today. Now he turned that ball around to get that inning going. And he didn't need to use his speed on the bases because Hudson Blank helped him out by letting him jog around the bases, if you will. There in 5'8, 100. 95 pounder. He doubles five home runs coming into this tournament. Led his team. 382 batting average as well. I said earlier that he'd be a good recruit. He is going to Lindenwood already, so he has a college commitment. You know, it's interesting. You saw Darren two pitches ago. He's kind of completely fooled. Did not take a great cut. And he's going to strike out there. And not my point is that he had that confidence himself. He knew, okay, I, I didn't look good. He fooled me. Give credit to Keyswater. He stepped right back in the box. I really like the way he saved yesterday's game. I mean, he just had that bulldog mentality. He's done a great job in center field. Can controls and captains that outfield for his team. The plate now it's Hudson Blank. Two home runs, one in each game of this tournament. It's another fun part of especially high school baseball. I mean, okay, Hudson, you're going to hit a home run in each game. <laughs> no, I mean, that's what he would say. <laughs> Have a smile on his face, but that's exactly what he's done. Yeah, had two home runs coming to Peori. He's going to leave, it appears, right now with four. Grounds out to short. Two outs here in the sixth. You know, give credit to the Henry Sinatra line fans. You're down eight to nothing. You get a strikeout, then a ground out, and they're still clapping on every out. Yeah. Good job. They have been truly enjoying this moment. First ever trip. And in less than half an hour, they're going to pick up first state trophy, team trophy in any sport in school history. And it will feel good. Pitch hitter here. Tyler Wally will pick up a bat, and he'll bat for Biffer. Well, he made an appearance yesterday as well. Getting a senior in at bat here. Make sure we get the lineups all registered. You know, you're in that third base dugout. Of course you want your teammate to get a, a base hit here. And of course you want to add some more runs, but of course you just can't wait to get back on the field to get three outs. It's like, okay, I think we got enough. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Wally going to get his hacks. And, well, he should. Back to back good pitches by Keyswater. I mean, those, those two balls had bite down and away. It was fastball, and Wally follows it off and gets a cheer from the Jabot side of the field. That was a center cut fastball, not necessarily something you want to do on 0 2 as a pitcher. But yeah, you could throw a fastball, but not right down Broadway. He'll go break breaking ball. Got him looking. So it didn't work out for Tyler Wally, but it's working out okay for the Jabot Hawks. Three outs away. Well, one A state baseball championship. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking, 
or the best in the outdoors. The North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Waterloo Jabot Catholic won state baseball championship trophy in their trophy case. It came in 2013 and 2019, finished second, three outs away from picking up state title number two and this one is in the air off the bat of Carson Rowe and in the glove of Tyler Furtich. Well it's been somewhat effortless for Biffer as far as intensity as far as pressure he just gets it throws his defense making plays. We're going to get a pinch hitter here for Zach Barnes. Max Kerbach, head coach in his fifth season with the Henry Snatchwine Mallards. And this will be one of the teams now, unless something truly incredible happens. As Jacob Schwarko approaches the plate, a senior. This will be a team that 20 years, 25 years from now, and Henry Snatchwine, yeah. these guys will be heroes. Yeah. They are now, and they will yeah. be. Really nice job by Max Kerbach here getting a senior only five of bats all year into the state championship game. Excellent coaching. Look at the Henry Snatchwine fans. Appreciate that as well. I'm gonna tell you, I, I I really appreciate those fans over there. They have stayed in it all game. Now they haven't been able to rig, you know, roar because yeah. there hasn't been much to roar about, but they have been so supportive. All the way through, and you said earlier this was a team. And Henry Snatchwine had finished third in the Tri County Conference this year, and yet here they are playing on the last day. Schwarko tried to beat the ball to first, will not do it, and Jabot one out away. Ray Thompson now to bat for Jacob Miller. Thompson, another senior. And in that Jabot dugout, just kind of jockeying for position. How can we get on the field as quickly as possible? On their feet on the third base side. And the roar will increase with intensity on each strike. Throw to first, and there it is, your 2023 Class 1A state champions, the Hawks from Waterloo, Jabot Catholic. <laughs> Andy Scare, I think he may have dodged that Gatorade bucket of water. Nope, he's, he got some on the back. So Scare wins his second state title, his second championship in school history and for several of those players those maroon colored jerseys they have a pair of rings a state basketball championship and they will get themselves a state baseball championship the Jabot hawks had quite a performance all weekend long a one run nail biter yesterday and then a dominant state championship game a superlative pitching performance by Brady Biffer, some timely hitting, the biggest one, of course, the home run. There's no doubt about that. That was fun to watch off the bat of Hudson Blank. A big hit by Jack Keevan. That all adds up to a resounding, convincing, dominating state championship victory. Hawks led wire to wire, a run in the first two more in the fourth, the five-run fifth inning. Final score, your 1A title game. Waterloo Jabot, Catholic, eight. 
Henry Sinatrawi, nothing. So we've crowned one state champion here this weekend in Peoria. A little bit later on, we will have our 2A title ball game. Back with you at about 3 o'clock for our third place game in Class 2A. That will match the Paul College Prep and Quincy Notre Dame to be followed by the 2A championship Columbia and Joliet Catholic Academy. Well, that's going to do it for Class 1A for your 2023 baseball season. For Mark Lindo, I'm Dave Bernhardt. Once again, final score, Jabot Catholic 8, Henry Sinatchwein nothing. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to stay on here for the handing out of the trophies. We'll go to the PA announcement. Is it K L K E? Yeah. Come on, you can't spell either. <laughs> there you go. That's easier. And now this time, please meet 
the Hawks of Waterloo Jamal Catholic. The girls of 2023 season in first place, a final record of 24 and 14. Athletic director Jim Montgomery. Head coach Andy Sayre. Assistant coach Jeff Bell. Assistant coach Eric Schrader. Manager Brian Stark. And now the players, number two, Tyler Frederick. Number four, Cameron Pingy. Number five, Daniel Darren. Number six, Tyler Wally. Number seven, Michael Wetzel. Number eight, Andy Altes. Gotcha. Number ten, Hudson Blank. Number twelve, Darren Kumpelman. I believe you. Number fourteen, Nathaniel Atkinson. Number 15, Tyler Furnish. Number 16, Noah Kinger. Number 17, Jai Lavington. Number 18, JJ Kinsey. Number 19, Brady Bipper. Number 20, Thomas Schaefer. Number 22, Jack Bassler. Number 23, Jack Keepin. Number 25, Peyton Schaefer. And number 35, Kay Casella. Class 1A, State 